Ah, the mouse. We all know him, some of us even love him. But why? And how? Everyone in the world knows the mouse. And today, we're going to find out just what makes him so special. To find out, we're going to have to go all the way back to 1920. After World War I, a young Walt Disney had just ended his work as an ambulance driver for the Red Cross. He then started working at a small art studio in an attempt to start a career as an animator. That's where he met Ub Iwerks, a fellow animator and key player in the Disney Empire's humble beginnings. Aha! Uh -huh, those are my dads! Mr. Mouse, please, I'm, I'm getting there. So in 1920, Walt and Ub were out of work and tried opening up their own studio, but that failed. They started making shorts for a different company until eventually Walt packed his bags and moved to California. In California, Walt, with the help of his brother Roy, successfully started Walt Disney Studios. Walt and Ub created a character named Oswald the Lucky Rabbit to be used by Universal Pictures. Eventually, all of the animators Walt had employed were hired away by Universal, and they couldn't even use Oswald, whose rights were owned by Universal as well. Uh -huh. Good riddance, am I right? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, yeah, that's when you were born, Mr. Mouse. After what happened with Universal, Walt looked to sell his films directly to distributors and along with Ub, created Mickey Mouse to star in those new films. I guess you can call yourself the start of Disney as we know it today. Uh -huh, that's me! Yeah, that's you alright. First appearing in 1928, Mickey wasn't a hit till the third short that featured him, Steamboat Willie, one of the finest early examples of a film with synchronized sound and animation. Walt continued pushing the envelope when it came to animation in the following decades, creating the first cartoons in color and the very first animated feature length film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. What? Why you know them? Now, we need to talk about business. The films they were making, like Fantasia and Bambi, were groundbreaking, but also incredibly expensive. The costs were so high and the margins so low that any poor showing at the box office for Disney would have sunk the studio completely. The Disney brothers needed capital, and they raised money by issuing shares of their stock and raised $4 million. Even through this, given the onset of World War II and how expensive their movies were to make, the brothers were in debt once again. That wasn't going to stop Walt's vision. In an effort to save and make money, the brothers started their own distribution company so they wouldn't have to go to a third-party distributor. By starting Buena Vista and adding other business units to the core animation studio, Walt was taking the steps he needed to create what he had been dreaming of. Exactly, Mr. Mouse. Walt's plan was to make an incredible theme park around the characters from his works. To get the money to make the theme park happen, Walt went so far as to use a loan from his own life insurance to open Disneyland in California in 1955. By incorporating merchandising and branding, Disney seemed to finally be taking off. But it didn't. The company's stock price wasn't rising as expected, and until the 1980s, the company was fending off hostile takeovers. By the late 80s, the Disney renaissance began. Movies like The Little Mermaid were huge successes. And Disney's stock was growing and growing, making Disney the largest entertainment empire in the world. The company now had multiple parks, a line of cruise ships, Disney brand stores, and television channels around the world. As of March 2019, Disney even acquired the media assets of 20th Century Fox, one of its competitors, cementing it as the largest media powerhouse on the planet. Disney now competes with Netflix and other services in the streaming market with its service, Disney Plus. Uh -huh. It's all thanks to me that everything worked out, isn't it? 
<laughs> I guess you could say that, and you were a big part of it, but really, it was the foundation that Walt, Roy, and Ub left behind that created the media empire we know today. There are a lot of ways for brands to be successful, but Walt's constant dreaming and boundary-breaking ideas were what made a somewhat successful animation studio into the media giant that thrives today.